What's up guys, Brad here, and in this video, I'm gonna go over how to use the three band parametric EQ within the SVS app to get better frequency response and bass in your room. Sound good? Let's get to it. Now, it goes without saying that you will need an SVS subwoofer, something like the SVS PB2000 Pro, to utilize the SVS app. Some of their lower end subwoofers like the PB1000 and the SB1000 do not offer that functionality. So I wanted to make a quick video going over what you can do in the SVS app with their parametric equalizer to really smooth out the response and the bass in your listening area. Now, to do this, I will be using Room EQ Wizard to take measurements. I don't recommend doing this without Room EQ Wizard or some way to measure the response because you could end up making things sound worse in your room. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through a basic measurement and then we're gonna start tweaking things using the parametric equalizer, which is three band in the SVS app and see if we can't flatten out that frequency response and correct maybe some issues. Now, if you're interested in any of the subwoofers I've mentioned already, such as the PB1000, SB1000 or the PB2000 Pro, check out the links in the description below. Also, if you're new to the channel, I post home theater and gaming related content every single week. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification so you'll never miss out when I upload a new video. Now with that said, let's go ahead and jump in and see if I can't make the bass response in my room better using the parametric equalizer in the SVS app. So I'm in the parametric EQ, we have this peak around 23, 22, so I'm gonna add 22. And then we're just gonna take six decibels out of there and we're gonna leave the Q factor the same and we're gonna run a measurement to see what's going on there. We're gonna rename this 20 Hertz minus six QF four. So that way we always know what measurements are what. All right, so as you can see, if we take a look and compare this to each other, this is before the EQ, it's a highlighted one here. And then this is with the EQ. So as you can see, we actually uh, flattened that out pretty good. Um, we didn't really, I mean, we lost some output down here. So I might wanna go back and tweak this a little further, uh, but this is a good starting point. What I do wanna do is try to tackle this big peak right here. Um, as you can see, we're up here around uh, 66, we'll say 66, and we're at 83 decibels right now, roughly, and we need to come down here. So we need to cut around eight decibels out of that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to the PEQ2, enable it, and then I'm gonna go to our 66 dB mark, and then I will take away eight decibels and see what happens here. We'll leave the Q factor the same as you can see on there, and we'll just see what happens. Let's run a measurement and we'll label this. All right, so this is actually really interesting. And this brings me to the topic of room gain and how you can kind of be fighting against the room when you're doing EQ. Okay, pause it right there. That peak at 66 Hertz might not actually be room gain, but instead a room mode, which is basically high or low pressure points in the room that affect certain frequencies. You'll notice that the frequencies below the peak at 66 Hertz don't see that same boost and react to EQ really well. Room gain would likely see those lower frequencies increase, which isn't the case here. That's why room gain compensation won't work, but you're gonna see me try it anyway. Okay, back to the video. So if we take a look here, this is our initial measurement and we were up here, which is around 83 decibels. Now we took out minus eight decibels, remember that but look how much we actually lost, eh, about a decibel. This is an instance where room gain is coming into play and you're fighting against it. And it doesn't matter really what we do, we can try to use the room gain compensation in the app and I'll run that real quick after I talk about it just for a second to see what it does to the sound. But in a situation like this, really one of your only options other than moving it around the sub itself, moving that around to try to find uh, where that peak is mitigated, but like everything else is pretty similar. That's an option or trying to use uh, room treatments, uh, acoustic panels, stuff like that. And even that is not a guarantee. Nothing is a guarantee. No room is perfect, but we can try to get it as close as possible. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about moving this sub around because as I have multiple 
subwoofers running sometimes. I need them in the same spots that they're always in. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And let me turn on the room gain compensation in the SVS app. So I'm gonna turn it on and then adjust this up to, well, we can't even really get up there. So the closest we can get to that peak right there is 40 Hertz. That's not really gonna help us. Um, I'll run it anyway, just cause I said I would, and I'll show you the results, but that's not really gonna do much because of where we are and where that peak is. So let me run that real quick. And we'll just label this room gain correction or RGC. Wow. Uh, so this is, <laughs> this is uh, pretty obvious that uh, the room gain correction won't do us any favors here because if we take a look at what, I mean, this is just a look at all the output we're losing. Even if we took off the EQ that we just did, that's gonna do nothing for this. You know, room gain typically is around between 20 and 40 Hertz. And that's why it, it maxes out between the two or gives you those two options. So you can go from 20 to 40 and in between, but this room in particular is a little problematic in that I have vaulted ceilings and stuff, so it's not really gonna do me any favors, as you can see. So this is definitely something we don't want. This is a total and utter lack of bass. This would be a really bad time watching a movie when you bring someone over and you're like, hey, I just got a new sub, check it out. Check out this room gain correction. This is what it does, and you have no idea what it's doing, and this is what you're listening to. So at this point, we basically just have to leave it how it is. We'll turn off room gain correction and just kind of leave it where it's at. I don't want to do more EQ than necessary, just because Odyssey, if I run Odyssey afterwards, and that's completely up to you if you want to, is it's going to do a little more EQ to the sub, and I'm really not a fan of adding EQ on top of EQ on top of EQ, because, you know, you can degrade the signal that way, even if you're just cutting and not boosting anything. And Odyssey does have a tendency to want to boost certain frequencies as well. So I just want to try to make that as clean and, and easy as possible for Odyssey so it doesn't have to do a whole lot. I'm just going to leave it the way that I adjusted those first couple things and, and let it do its thing. So with all that said, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of using a parametric equalizer, even with the SVS app or any other app for that matter, to kind of smooth out your frequency response. Again, I, I would not recommend boosting any frequency I would only cut, even if you have to raise the overall level afterwards, uh, it's better to do that than to just boost a lot of frequencies trying to fix stuff. Luckily in this situation, uh, this frequency response is pretty good with a few nulls here and there, but that room mode or that, that kind of huge peak around that 66 hertz mark uh, really can't be corrected with just uh, standard or traditional EQ. I need to look at either, you know, adding room treatments or whatnot to improve the sound or move the sub. But I do have multiple subs, two subs in fact, that I turn on and that really kind of helps alleviate a lot of those issues. So if you enjoyed this video at all and found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you appreciate this type of content. Also, if you have any questions about subwoofer setup or settings or room EQ stuff, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below and let me know. It gives me ideas for videos in the future. And I just love talking about this stuff with you guys and learning. There's always something new to learn. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next one where I finally have some scrap metal for Walter. Um. Huh? Yeah, what is it? <laughs>